aja Hi, good evening to the Phil Crew Show 2.0. I have a very, very special guest here, folks. You're in for a treat. I have three special guests. Oh, my goodness. I have Lucci Del Guado and also Craig Thompson and James Hinsley, all fellow martial artists. And we'll be discussing not just martial arts, but also the events uh, that we'll be participating in and also organising. Welcome to the Phil Crew Show, guys. All right, Phil. You got two special guests. I've just, I've just come along just to see what's happening. <laughs> You're definitely special, Lucci. I was, I was just about to go to the <laughs> really night, but, but you know, you, you, uh, you, you three was just pestering me. Well, like, go on, then. <laughs> <Make it coffee. laughs> oh, <laughs> folks. You're in for a treat. As you can see, you know, already, you know, we've got sort of sharing the love here, you know, with not just Kaizen and Martin Lutz and Expo organiser Lucci, but also his uh, fellow martial artists as well. Not just jiu-jitsu, but also karate practitioners we've got here uh, that are available at your disposal. If you've got any Q&As, feel free. At the moment, we are going to discuss about Kaizen, Kaizen um, Martial Arts Expo 2023. Oh my goodness, exciting times. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Lucci? Well, yes, it is exciting. Um, it's our fifth, it's the fifth one. So it's Kaizen number five. Very strong lineup, a little bit different. We've uh, added a tournament this time so we've got the great we've got great britain jiu-jitsu coming along and having a takeover we've got the filipino martial arts um guys taking over the weapons area again craig's craig in the corner no one puts craig in the corner craig in the corner is teaching <laughs> he's, his, um, he's his first time at at, at, at um kaizan like i mean like we've, we've discussed before haven't we like kaizan's very grassroots and it's brilliant for grassroots instructors and, I, and i've been on the mats with Craig um, a couple of times, and he, he, he's just made a lot of noise. He's, and he's young; he knows, you know, he, he, his karate is absolutely ace. And um, I said to him, you know, let's let, 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 jump on to Kaizen. But yeah, what other karate instructors have you got there? I said, oh, early, not not that many. Simon Oliver, Aidan Trimble, and you, you about pooed yourself, didn't you, mate? So, but it was a, so it's a great, <laughs> a great achievement. So there you are, the karate. I just want let, let's 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 talk about uh, while we're on the subject of karate. The karate lineup, Kaizen, is just so it, it's immense, it's brilliant. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing for it. You know, you, yeah, you've yeah. got such a good good mix. You've actually got like the perfect range as well. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your sort of niche is in, in karate this time round. You've got the likes of Simon Oliver, who, who if you don't know who he is um, in terms of the karate world, you should find out. Um, you know, he, he will cover everything that involves utilising karate for effective self-protection. You've then got Aidan Trimble, who, who is a massive name, particularly in the sport karate world. Oh. European um, champion for, for years, yeah. and, and years yeah. and years, and then yeah. you've got um Terry Berkey, who, who is an absolutely the phenomenal force of nature, bad boy. I, yeah, now that's why I've given him a nickname, and I hope he carries it forever. <laughs> the Kai Koshin, Nick, but oh, I hope I pronounce that right. The Kai Koshin, bad boy himself, Terry, the Welsh dragon, he's an absolute animal, and he's, he's uh, awesome, he's really cool. Yeah, and, so and got, yeah, I, I get to share mats with those sorts of guys. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's a very humbling El, experience for me. El Griffiths doing the karate jitsu, I believe, or some budos. Or I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to his set as well. Um, well got, I think that's it on the karate. Yeah, 
that's it. The jujitsu jujitsu lineup is ace, absolutely ace. Ken Kenny Coolshaw, my my mate Terry Lee. Um, a gent, a lad called Mark Young, who is an absolute savage from Liverpool. He's an absolute savage on the mat. He was at the Japanese martial arts show, Craig, if you can remember him. Um, um Mark Young. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, Kenny Coolshaw, Ken Coolshaw, Jiu Jitsu legend, Jiu Jitsu royalty, and we've got Kevin Pell, head coach, chief instructor, Ishan Riai, 10th Dan. Absolutely, wow. yeah, exactly. It's, it, it, it's took a few years to get him get him to the show, but finally, we've got we, he should have come last year, but he, he couldn't do it, and he. he should have done the one before lockdown as well, but we finally nailed him. We finally nailed him. So we've got so a very, very strong jujitsu um lineup. And you know, uh, with that, they, we, Kevin O'Hagan, if you want to go more into the combat side of jujitsu, we've got the real deal himself, the godfather, one of the godfathers of um, reality-based self-defence, Kevin O'Hagan. And going on to self-defence, we've got celebrity bodyguard Red Orr coming again with, with Pete Mogridge, Peter Holmes doing the pressure points. The list, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to get the actual timetable up. You got, you got Julian Mass on, haven't, haven't you? you um, Julian. Really enjoyed this yeah. Yeah. I, was on, I was on his podcast last night. Yeah. It, was a, it, was a, it was a pleasure to have him. Sat this morning. Um, I watched that this morning. Yeah, yeah. Julian Mason. Um, but for me, for me, what I'm really looking forward to is one of my one of my heroes as 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 a well then in the nineties, um, the Godfather of British MMA. His nickname Lee Hanzel. I'm really looking on honestly. It it, it it's. You know these guys. They don't. They don't. They don't do many UK seminars. Um, I think it's Terry Burkick's very first UK seminar. This one. Um, but yeah, Lee Hands on. Really looking forward to to having him there. Uh, and ooh, great, great. And we've got loads of like up and coming. But really cool demo teams. Um, we've got all sorts. And again, then we've got the we've got we've got the Jiu Jitsu. Competition jiu jitsu tournament, just uh, and plus the um fitness. If you're into all that, if you're into your kettlebells and CrossFit and um things like that, then, then that's that's in there somewhere if if it's there. But it's all about the martial arts in it, guys. One on, on this one, the so, kickboxers, Thai boxers. We got we got we got professional bare knuckle boxers coming along, a uh, professional, pro yeah, yeah, professional boxers coming along as well. So, yeah. uh, Luke, you just just a quick pause because uh, uh, <laughs> I've got a little surprise for Craig, Luke. <laughs> are we allowed these? <laughs> What's your heart? What's your heart? <laughs> you gonna you need that in the weapons area? In the weapons area. <laughs> Lucci, I'm gonna be disappointed oh. if you ain't got lightsaber dueling now, mate. Oh, exactly, exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd bring that out, Craig, because I know he's he, he's, you know like, he's like you like, could. Uh... <laughs> it's froze again. And, uh, them it's... sons of Albi one. He's back. He's oh. back. <laughs> hey. We got a lot, Phil. We got get those sons of Albi one side the academy. Party. Let me touch on the Kaizen pre-party because this is going to be really hilarious. Do you know who's doing the live podcasts on Kaizen pre-party? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. What, can, what can go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna, we're going to have some black country humour, aren't we, Craig? I've told you I'm coming dressed as a Peaky Blinder, mate. That, oh, that brilliant. Was a joke. I'm gonna have, <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have a flat cap with me. Yeah, no razors in there though, mate. They won't let us in the venue. Oh. <laughs> That's going to be fabulous. It's going to be fabulous. So we got that. We got the um, Kaizen pre-party on the on the evening before, um, where we'll we'll have just a get together, 
small get together, about 150 of us. It's uh, it, it, it's almost sold out now, to be honest. There's about three or four seats left, and um, these two lovely chaps here are going to be looking after the live interviews. What we're going to do, we, they don't even know they're going to be interviewed. We're just going to hopefully get them drunk, aren't we? But not too drunk because some there'll be lots lots of teaching <laughs> the day after. So it's an gonna, expensive game. Gonna game up and I'm just going <laughs> to leave them to them too. I don't, I don't know whether they come back next year. It's it, whether there really even is a Kaizen next year. It's all in the hands of Craig and James and the. <laughs> and the <laughs> well, we're uh, we'll be we'll be up, we'll be all right. We we we're, <laughs> we're trying not to upset anyone. <laughs> no, it'll be all right. Yeah. We'll be good. But they have that they've, they've played a big part in Kai's on this year. These two have, to be fair, they really have. So, well done. No, I appreciate but, the opportunity. You know. Yeah, man, and they and they they they. they I'll, I'll plug their podcasts before mine. Brilliant. They've had some great guys on there. Obviously, they know that they, they know the karate market really, really well, very well indeed. And um, there's some of the guests. I mean, both of you, both of you, with the Phil Caruso. I'm. Um, Yes, I'm on it. Have I been on your podcast yet, Craig? I'm not yet. You're not no, invited. No, we, we do, oh, we do right, need to invite, a range of visits to come up, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to come up, but I, I wouldn't invite me either, mate. I talk too much. No, nah, no. Nah. Well, at the minute, we're, uh, we're starting out in the karate, the way it's working is we're starting out with karate and then we're branching out. So Jiu-Jitsu yeah. is going to be one that we are going to be covering. And obviously, yeah, yeah. you're going to be on our list. And there's a lot of other people we've got on the list, haven't we? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, but you know, do you know, I'm sure you you do very well in the jujitsu market anyway, because because you, you you know what I mean. You're good, you're good, you're good lads. You're good lads. So, there you go. Oh, you guys, seriously, this is so entertaining for me. You know, having all three of you on here at once is 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 entertaining for me already. You know, no doubt the, a few other people that if they haven't seen this yet, when they go back onto the replay, right, folks. I'm going to ask a few questions for these guys. How did all three of you meet? Japanese martial arts show. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, it was... Um, it's causing. No, nah, because I, I brought you along to the Japanese show, remember? In Wolverhampton. Yes, 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 yes. yes you yes. went Kaizen as well, though, previously. Yeah, we, we went to Kaizen yeah, yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just sort of get what shows on. We bring people. We bring people together. The right people together. I discovered before, just after lockdown, when we, all, we when we all could come out and play again. I got a phone. I got a, a, someone reached out to me and said, um, "I want. I would like. I get about six or seven this year. I've had about six or seven people reach out to me and say, can we can we put an event on together?' And um, you know, now I'm very. I'm very careful who I work with. So I put this, I had this idea of, uh, of, of the Japanese martial arts show, which I, I'm very pleased to announce that this year, 2023, you will be seeing another Japanese martial arts show because it was very successful. It was Let's very, go. very successful. Really was. But yeah, and and these guys, these guys came on at, at, at a great time, and we net obviously with with these with these sort of events, you you go you network and make friends. You come you come as strangers, you know. I saw James. James sat all on his own, and I went so to him. He said, "You're right, you're right there, James. Would you like to come onto the mats?" He was all on his own, like a little lost puppy. Only joking. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> <laughs> when I. When I first, when I knew that Craig had really good talent, I seen that he, we 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 taught on this seminar as a favour um, for somebody, and Craig taught after me or before me. I, I, I'm not quite quite sure. Yeah, it was quite but close Craig, together. Yeah, it was quite close together, and I and I got a good glimpse of Craig's seminar, and I really liked his concept and what he did. And I um, had a chat with him. And I said, "Look, you need to." Put yourself out there. I can help you, man. And he says, "Oh, I'm, I'm not that good." I, you know, yeah, you are. Just, just bloody do it. Just go out, do it. And I advise that to everybody because when when I set these like events up, people will say, 
what do you want me to teach? I'm like, teach what you teach. It doesn't matter what you teach. Just teach what you teach. Do what you do. Do you know what I mean? That's the only best advice I can give is do what do do what you do. And um, Craig Craig's got a he's found his feet, and from then since then, he's he, he's taught alongside wicked march such so as Simon Oliver and um, Steve Lowe, and you know instructors like that. And it's really nice to see. It really is nice to see. And now he's doing. Now he's doing Kaizen. And he's doing, and, and, and he will do the Japanese martial arts show as well. And you never know what happens next year. He might just tell me to piss off and do his own. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I've won. Uh, <laughs> I'll be like, no problem. No problem. Which it is, it's no problem. It's what the platform's for. It's the platform's for, for the, for the tomorrow's, tomorrow's legends. No, you, oh, you, you should guys. always to the people to help you get where you get, you know. So, yeah, yeah consider yeah. me a permanent fixture as long as you land me on the mats, mate. Yeah, sure, <laughs> man. It's, it's, you know, sometimes you got to be... profile. Facebook profile pictures are a bit of a red flag for me. So, for example, Craig, if you was doing this and you had a tiger in the background with the horizon sun... You'd think I was Master Ken. Like that. <laughs> Right. <laughs> or, or if your face or if your profile picture had a had, had, had a had a certificate in a frame with horn I'm not gonna say the rest. Are you smiling? I'm like I've got one of those in a box yeah, somewhere. They're a bit of red flags for me, but they're a bit cringy, a bit cringy. <laughs> Oh, you guys! I told you, folks. Like you know, the audience, uh, audience and listeners out there, we're having so yeah. much fun on here. It's we, unbelievable. We don't mean no harm, though, Phil. We don't mean no harm. It's not serious. It's not serious. It's it, it's proper banter, right? I know. I love it. This, this is my type of banter as well. This is why I love having yeah. people like yourselves on the show. Yeah, yeah. Do you know when you do In the Samurai Free pod- Podcast? Yeah, when you do well, when people start putting like laughing faces on your on your material and and angry faces, like really angry faces. Why, why are you so fucking angry? Why are you angry? <laughs> <laughs> what are you angry about? I put, I put a post on um, promoting one of the Kaizen coaches, a very big. I'm not mentioning name, really big name in the in the jujitsu world. And one of his old students put an angry face on it. I said, "Why are you so fucking angry?" So I phoned him. Why are you so fucking angry? What's up, man? You're all right. Everything cool. Everything cool. Everything cool. What are you angry for? How about I don't know you? How about I upset you? Because I don't know you, and I don't. I don't want to. I don't come across things like that. I don't get it. Don't get it. Yes. Oh. And that yeah. other dude. That other dude. Oh. Again, no names mentioned. Puts loads of like laughing faces. I'm like, what? Why are you fun? What's so funny? Do you know what I mean? So I'm looking through all my contacts. Just, what, have I, what have I spelt wrong now? Whose name? What have I done here? No, it's my, right. you spelled my name wrong. I didn't, mate. James, <laughs> James did that to wind you up. <laughs> Actually, interesting, interesting fact. <laughs> on one of the first things I did for Craig, I did actually spell your name wrong, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> right, so, JB Steele. The editing skills are great, but, um, yeah, you all need a dictionary, you know? Yeah, this is, this is funny, mate. <laughs> like you know Jamie Steele? You know Jamie Steele from rugby, the ninjutsu guy? Good kid, really good lad, Jamie Steele. But I, put in, I put him down as steel, like steel, like, the, the, like metal steel. It's come back. No, it's seal. It's fucking seal. Looks like I thought it was steel. I mean, don't it sound better though? Reorder your surname as steel. <laughs> like, do what you want. Do what you want. Right. Yeah. Oh, guys. Oh, wow. I love Tommy, this. Tommy Joe, Tommy Joe Moore. What did I put him down as? Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee Moore. I oh, went, fuck hell, Tommy. It sounds not as better Tommy Lee Moore. But so, yeah, they, they, or something like that. It sounded really, really cool anyway. So it's just Actually, life. It's just just little mistakes you make because this you're so busy all the time and you're just rushing rushing things. 
But you know, no harm done. It's Hollywood anyway. Actually, it's what they do in Hollywood anyway. Mm. Well, actually, now you it's mentioned your Hollywood it, name. Guys, yeah, yeah. That, actually, you mentioned it, guys. If you was to change your name, what would it be? That's a funny. It's so funny that you should say that. Max You're talking Power. about names. What was that, Craig? Max Power. <laughs> Max Power. <laughs> James oh. will change his name to Lucha Del Guardio. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you know what I would give for that, but I think I think it'd be a toss up between that and Robert Frank. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know something, Lucci? He'd be a great yeah. one to go on a podcast, he would. Robert Frank. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, for Coys, it? It'd be awesome. People would just flock yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, you know, oh um, guys, we've got some people here. We've got a, good evening, Phil, uh, Phil Moulton and Wayne Hunt and Edward Bishop. The He's three of us, Phil, we did, we did the podcast together. It was really? that bad. It was that bad, wasn't it? You didn't even upload it. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really bad. We just, we just like, I went to bed and I thought about it. And I was like, why did I say that? I went, well, Craig said that. And then James said, I was like, oh, man, I can't <laughs> I'm going to keep my yeah. mouth shut. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And hopefully it will just go away. This was six months ago. So I, I was, um, I, yeah, it was all good. Oh, guys. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Lucci, are you aware yeah. that Craig's got a, got a name now? Go on. It's Craig the Viking Thompson. I've got a name for him. <laughs> yes. He's a size of one. He's got a name. We've we got to have a name for you, James and Lucci. So I'm sure we'll have names for you. Great ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the yeah. Italian's taken, any. it? <laughs> Steven Spielberg. <laughs> George Lakers, actually. George Lakers. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Leslie Knight's on. Great, great, great guys they are, aren't they? The Knight brothers. Really God, absolutely. Awesome. Love David John we love them, boys. Yeah, big them up, man. Oh. Wow, uh, we love that. We love the boys. Then give it out, oh, right, guys. <clears throat> What's his name, man? The little boy, man. The, the son, one of the kids, Harley. All right, Harley. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. This was this, 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 this is why no one invites me nowhere because he just, all right, I can see by all three of your faces, <laughs> you've had enough me now. <laughs> yeah, Harley's a great, yeah, great. Oh, that's He's nice. a, Night. Big up the night family oh. in um is it Tipton? Are they are they Tipton guys? The night? Yeah. yeah, born and bred. <laughs> yeah. Tipton massive. Oh right, Phil. Sorry, oh, mate. You yeah. it's your thing there. It's no, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean I'm enjoying this. You know, it's really entertaining and I'm I'm actually enjoying it's every cool. second I'm, of it, guys. I've lost, so I've lost I've lost another hundred followers. So I don't I'm, don't worry about that. <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> Would you all be in a film? Like he's lost all his followers. So. You know what I mean? <laughs> Would you all be in a film together, like an action thriller and comedy, if you were given yeah. a role well, each? Dumb and dumber. <laughs> <laughs> dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber. Even more dumber. Mission Impossible. We could pull off Mission Impossible. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> with, with the added sort of comedy twist to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got to be done. Oh, that's a that's a great one, guys. Oh my goodness. Right, who is? Would you say is the funniest out of all of you? It's me, isn't it? It's me, isn't it? It's me, isn't I love that. Oh, okay. Hold you. Isn't it me? Who is the most wildest out of three of you? 
Okay. Fucking me again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Who is the most laid back out of three of you? What can me again? It's me. I'm everything. He's <laughs> leaning right back. He's almost on the floor in the, in the next few minutes. <laughs> He'll be lying on the floor. Craig's more yeah. like Craig's wall like Craig's more like like is 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 the brains. Oh, I'm he's not laid back brain. though. Yeah, he, 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 <laughs> he, he's an intelligent one. Easy, intelligent one. Me, me and James are thick as pig shit, man. But Craig's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just the, I'm just the monkey with the camera. I am. <laughs> yeah. You know, like they, you know, they like the monkey toys you have, and you wind them up, and it's there James with the symbols. So I'm just there with the camera. James, James is tech. He's yeah, a, he's yeah. tech, man. Yeah. James is paid in bananas. Yeah, we can't oh, say too much, Phil, because no. we we launch with this. We, we're going to be launching something amazing, very amazing. Of course, no, I, no, no. I, I, I'm not. No, we don't want to. We don't want. You know. Of course, if Jackie Chan, Jet Li, and Scott Adkins, as well as Tony Jaw and mm, Michael, Craig, Day Michael and Snap now, Craig will batter all of them in one night. <laughs> 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 I'll smack the Irish out of Conor McGregor. Let's go. Finish your question. That's all right. No, that was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if they knocked on the door and they said we would like to spar with you and be one of the characters like the Expendables, how would you respond if they asked individually all of you at your front door to? Well, I'd say Scott Atkins is out because he got killed in the Expendables. Was it two? He got minced yeah. by an helicopter, so he's out. Um, <laughs> Jet Li retired in the Expendables, so like, I think that only leaves like Tony Jaa. We'll take him on. Oh, he'd do a good part. <laughs> Stick him next to Terry Crews. You know, he'd look <laughs> even smaller. It'd be brilliant. There he goes. Answers my question. Oh, my goodness. What about you, James? Who would you have? I don't know why. He's just... He's, he's always been my go-to guy. Like, anything... The earliest experience I had with martial arts films was Jackie Chan films. Uh, I've got my instructor to thank for that. Um, first film I saw, I mean, I think it was Jag Dragons Forever, Jackie, just just for the comedy aspect, you know. There you he go. To, yeah, and he, and he knows how to hit and fucking run. I mean, everything you see him in, he's like, leave me alone. <laughs> you ever seen that one? That's me. <clears throat> was you aware that he he uh, he owns uh, some hotels and cinemas? Because I think did I discuss this with you on one of my last episodes, Craig? You did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, just to let Lucci and James know that apparently there was one particular guy um, in Jackie Chan's life because obviously he's he was part of the Rush Hour franchise. So um, just to let everybody know, if you wasn't sure and haven't seen Craig um, podcast with myself on, on one of the last few episodes, is that... Um, Jackie Chan was actually standing in front of Chris Tucker and he was smiling and Chris Tucker said, oh, this hotel, this swanky hotel is really, really nice. I'd like to stay in one of these. He said, oh, really? Oh, that's nice. He goes, yeah. Uh, you like it? He said, yeah. Oh, that, that's the response for um, from Jackie Chan. And Chris Tucker said, yeah, yeah, well, I'd love to stay in one of these. Can I stay in one of these? Said, yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I own it. <laughs> And you should have seen Chris Tucker's face. Is like you what? <laughs> the, us the usual response is like, no way, man. You know, he's like, yeah, yeah. So um, he's got one of those guys. So I can't believe it. You know, Jackie Chan owns a hotel, and Chris Tucker was just standing right in the middle of it, thinking that <laughs> he could actually, you know, hire it out when he didn't probably didn't have to actually, because obviously, you know, he's his friend. You know, could have just stayed he's in there. Doing a lot of, I don't think he's doing a lot of anything now, other than lots of pro Chinese com Communist Party propaganda. And it since he's done, <laughs> didn't he do something to piss off the Communist Party? 
No, his son did. Um, his son got jailed on a drugs charge or something like that. Or he, That's he, it. He was arrested on a drugs charge. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the Communist Party's been leaning on him pretty hard as a result, I believe, is the, the current yeah. story. <laughs> We're going to end up putting no, Jack right. in the gulag, man, talking about him like that. <clears throat> got to uh, get him... He's got to get that social credit score up. <laughs> <laughs> Because if, if if they're doing social game. credit scores in the UK now, we're screwed. We're screwed, <laughs> especially after this. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. It's been nice now. You I'm resorting to anarchy, mate. I'm I'm just going to be have to become a domestic terrorist. <laughs> hey, get in there. Banging on the doors. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You probably, you probably got, you probably gathered from Phil from half of the conversations us lot have. We, we are probably on the MI5 watch list. In fact, we're definitely <laughs> on the MI5 watch list. Lucci, especially because you know he's got that Italian name. It just sounds dodgy. He looks like a Bond villain, Dave Lucci. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Do any of you have a collection of any martial arts weaponry at all? Yeah, I don't know about collection. I've got I've got a couple of swords um, yeah. that were interesting to me, um, and I mean everything else is pretty much in my dojo. I've got knives and stuff all over me me house. <laughs> so Ooh. I've got a I've got a Cuba time, mm. which I've owned for thirty years. No way. Yeah, serious man. It's like it's a key ring. You know them key ring ones. It, it used to be black. It's now silver because the paints all come off. Yeah, I've had that for I've had that for thirty years. That one. I've got, I've got a selection of knuckle dusters. Wow. I don't showcase them. They're just like you know. What I mean, I'm not no nut job or nothing. Like 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 <laughs> like. I've got I've got um I've got samurai swords. Wow. <clears throat> yes. Um. Next to my bed, I've got a I've got a really nice blade. Helps me sleep at night. Goodness. Um, yeah, I've got I've got a pair of tonfers. I've had them for about thirty years as well. Japanese oak wood, really nice. Goodness. Uh, but what I do have, I was lucky enough to train with Richard Brustello, and he signed. Uh, my screamer sticks for me, which I absolutely treasure, obviously, because he's no longer here with me. They're in my son's. I've given them to my son. My son really, because he look, really looks after things. And he's, um, yeah, and I've got some, I've got a belt signed by Hoist Gracie. But I've also given that to my son. You know, the stuff I've given to him is, uh, you know, pass them down, try and keep in the family for years, years to come. And, um, yeah, Richard Costello signed my screamer sticks. Wow. Yes. Um, John, I've got a good story when I first met Richard Bustello. Would you like to hear that? That's really, that's a really good one. Go for um, it. Yeah. I used to, I used to sell Dorman, for, for Dorman, I used to sell, you know, for bouncers, I used to sell control and restraint holds for this company. And um, cool. the guy, the guy who ran the company, um, his name was Martin Sterling. Um, a very, he's, he's no longer with us no more. But it was a very, very, very good Jeet Kune Do JKD instructor. Very good, one of the best, literally one of the best. So, my friend, who's also a martial artist from, is a judo teacher. Keith, shout out to Keith if you're listening. Very good for mate of mine. And um, he was sat there, and I sat like here. I was sat next to each other. We're on the phone. We're doing cold calls. And walks in. Martin walks in, the boss, with a couple of other guys. And um, Richard Bustello was there. And I looked up. And I looked at my pal, and I looked. And I just couldn't make that. They saw that I heard his American accent. I thought, fucking hell, it's Richard, Richard Bustello. So he says, right then, guys, lunchtime, let's go upstairs. We're all going to have a lesson with Richard Bustello. So I'd like a private lesson with him. And um, that weekend, 
that weekend. It was on a Friday, this was. Then on, on, on the Saturday, massive seminar in the car park underneath um, underneath the building. Big, huge seminar of R Richard Bustello. Then I trained with him in Coventry just before he passed away, about a couple of years before he passed away for a weekend. So, yeah, that was... Uh, I was about 25 at the time when I first met him. So, cool. yes, 20 years, 20 years ago that was. About 20 years ago. Oh, what an honour. I know. No, I was 27. It was 20, 20 years ago when 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 I very first met um, Richard Bustello. But before that, I, you know, I read about him in, in, in magazines and and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right. Do any of your friends and family members practice any form of martial arts other than yourselves, guys? Yeah, I've got, I've got six older brothers. Five of us are at Dungreed. <clears throat> Goodness. Beat that. Uh, what? <laughs> wow, Lucci, you've got a well, great lineage there. You know, for um, yeah, for yeah. martial arts. What yeah, about yourself, yeah. Craig? Yeah. Uh, just my two sons. Oh, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, my son trains with me. He's a boxer. Um, yes, uh, he, he, he does jujitsu as well. Craig's, yeah, it's good. Good. James, Craig's yourself? Son. What about yourself? You got anyone else? To... I, uh, my daughter, my daughter trained for a while. Um, she stopped, but yeah, no, I'm the I'm the only one in my uh, I'm the only one in my family. Uh, my daughter stopped. I wasn't really that bothered. Uh, it, it sort of got to me a bit that she stopped, but so long as she she learned enough to handle herself, you know, a bit of basic self defence and stuff, which I think all women should now, or you know, young girls and stuff. Yeah. So you know, it, I'm not really fussed by that. I would love to see her to get love to get her to get the suit back on to carry the torch, like when I'm uh, too old and knackered. But you know, who knows? Well, this this is it. You know, you never know. Uh, later on. It could be a possibility, you know, where you can sort of pass it on. You know, it. I think sometimes it's like myself. You know, I've I put my hands up to that. I martial arts uh, saved me. You know, I mentioned it to a lot of people before, and even to Lucci and even Craig and even yourself now, James. You know, I. Yeah. When I went back into martial arts, I realised this is who I am. You know, it's my uh, my self identity. I was a bit lost to start off with because I wasn't sure. You know, you try things and you think, well, hold on a minute, I'll go back to it. And then when I started retraining again, and I thought there's nothing wrong with retraining because you can start fresh. You see different things from a different light, you know, from a different perspective. Because obviously when you're younger, you know, you've got different reasons for it. Your energy level is higher. You know, you can do a bit more. But as you get to a certain age, you just think, well, look, what should I do, you know, to keep your mind focused and, and, and keep you more sort of refreshed with the new things that are going on? Because, you know, how how do you see martial arts old school wise, all three of you, this is just to put the question out there, and from old school wise to how you would see new school? Because there's a lot of different things now, you know, there, there must be certain things where there was a lot of red tape because I know in the old school, all three of you now, you no, no doubt you, you're aware through your you know personal experience and lineage, you know, Lucci and even Craig, you know, you've probably heard a lot of stories about and even witnessed yourself and yourself, James, you know, where sort of protection wise in in terms of like having mouth guards and everything else, it was more of just signing on the dotted line, you know, that they wouldn't be responsible. So if you went into a tournament or a competition or even in a certain club, you know, you're uh, you're you're there. You're at your own disposal, really. You know, you've got to be aware that you know you're going there, and then you could possibly come out with a black eye, <laughs> split lip, and some even some broken bones <laughs> potentially. Uh, I'll tell I'll tell you a funny one about that, Phil. I'll tell you a really funny one. I um I stopped training for a few years. Well, actually, quite a few years. I I stopped training for about ten years. And uh, when I went back to my instructor's dojo, and he says, "Oh, we're doing sparring," and I said, oh, okay, and uh, he said, "He said, have you got any pads?" I mean, what? He went, pads. We don't use pads, do we? <laughs> we never used to. We never used to use pads. So yeah, that was that was uh, 
And wow. like certain things, like it, it, it was like a, like having such a long break. What I had, it, it, like certain things, like there was certain exercises we used to do, and it's like, yeah, you can't do this; it's too hard wearing on the knees, mate. Like all this shit that I used to go through, and Craig will probably be a testament to some of the shit that we all used to have to go through, especially in the karate <laughs> world. Some of it, and uh, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's for the better. Some of them days, we, we both agreed on that with Craig, and it's for the better that stuff. We've grown out of that, and you don't need to do that anymore. Pe- people who are there want to be there to learn. Like back in the day, I think there was a lot of egos. We've, you know, you've got to have this like hard man persona and treat your students like shit. And now it's like people are there because they want to be there. You know what I mean? Um, you, you haven't now got to blindly follow people. You know, we 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 are now like we we utilizing technology. You know, between the four of us to do to do and say things between ourselves that wouldn't be possible yes. even 10 years ago, you know, and we, we have access to so much information. We can, we can communicate with so many people, so many areas of expertise and that name that just wasn't available back in the, you know, like the old days. Um, and as great as they would have been for the people that were products of that time, they, they, they're just not fit for purpose when you match up, the, the kind of world that we live in now, you know, information is, is fast flowing. Things are happening quicker. You know, you've got to sort of have your finger on that pulse and, and always consistently looking for new information, new people to work with, different ways to train and to keep safe. And in it has worked for the better. You know, I mean, the, one of the one of the things that I've ranted about recently, there, there was um, there was a case of um, uh, uh, uh sex offender um yes. quite a prominent one in the karate well i ain't going to go into the details for that but they, they've obviously been been sent down for for four decades worth of offenses you know and the one really good thing where protection's concerned isn't about physical protection anymore it's about being able to keep students safe from predators it is now more than ever loads more difficult almost impossible to get away with being you know, one of these nasty, horrible, predatory scumbags, you know, even even the ones that are so well-versed at grooming and stuff like that, like what happened with um, uh, Zara Pythian and her husband, you know, the, them years back, all of that stuff. Um, you said the Z word. I did. Um, you promised, we promised we're not mentioned. <laughs> the buzzword. Word. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one of those things like... It, you know, these are people that thought they could get away with it. Um, and, you know, <laughs> thanks to the fact that information is now... I'm not going to say, no, say nothing, Craig, friend. <laughs> <laughs> set him off, look. But uh, it's more, people are now more protected than ever, and these people we... cannot get away with it. And that, that is only a good thing, in my opinion. Off then the nonce rabbit hole, seriously, because like that is the one thing that all three of us are like out with double barrel shotguns. On. I th- like, it's, uh, not, it's not, it's not just us, us three. I, I think it's only because us three speak and, and we've we, we got we got the balls to fucking say it. How it is, we only say things what people are thinking, don't even go there. That when all that came out, when all that came out, right, about them two. How angry was you? That was fuming. I was fuming. Oh, really? I was fuming. Fuming. I, was, I thought, now nah, this is all, this this, this will be, you'll be not guilty. It's all lies. Blah, of course. Of course it would. Of course it would. We've had dinner, I've had dinner with him. My daughter's had pictures of him. My, my daughter idolised her. Do, 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 do you know what I mean? It could have been my kids. It could have been your kids. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, you know, not in my uh, martial <laughs> community. I'm gonna build. Uh, you know, we, we, we all we all chip in. We all chip in to build to build a safe martial arts community. Yes, and and put and promote very brilliant, good British martial arts. Sorry, there's no room for that. There's no room for that in my in my my community, mate. No chance. No chance whatsoever. No, no, no. So what would you say, because that's a qu- pretty interesting sort of controversial thing, but it's also important. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that you guys have sort of brought that out, because I think um, the last thing we want is to have misrepresentation within our sort of happy 
medium of commu uh, martial arts community. And um, when we have things happen like this, do you think that have some sort of um, legal thing of where they'd be, uh, they will be banned uh, in, in regards to what that they they've done because uh, some form of punishment where yeah, they'll no be longer be able, to be, be able to come they in. Was arrested, they was arrested in 2017. In 2017, they was arrested, but were was allowed to still teach children. They knew that. They knew that. How do, how do you sleep at night when you know you know for a fact what you've done? How, how, how can you do it? Do you know what? Do you know what? You're if you're gonna take, we're gonna. Put aside martial arts now, yes. right? Mm -hmm. You're going to take your kid to a football football lesson, right? You trust the football coach. You've got to. You've got to trust the football coach, haven't you? Martial yes. arts coaches yes. are exactly the same. You take, you, you, you know, you, you. We want our students. We put everything in place. Do you know what I mean? You, you. It's just, it's just common sense. You don't do one to one private lessons with a minor. Fucking no, no go. Right, and if you are a teacher, what does that, mate? Fucking have a word with yourself. Right, you don't, you don't. It's things like you know, you. If if I've got I've I've got a policy in my in my class. All right, if I need to speak to uh, one of the kids privately, right, I take a coach with me all the time, all the time. All the parents are there. If there's just you know, just things like that. It's just good practice. It's very good practice. You know, little things like that. But it's standard safeguarding, isn't it? Of course it is, man. Yeah. Of course it is. If you've not done no if you've got no sense of safeguard or no no safeguarding at all, you shouldn't be teaching. You shouldn't be teaching. That's that that's for adults as well. Adults and uh, kids as well. Well no, that. that's 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 brilliant, guys, because I think also, you know, like they have for, for actors and actresses, they have things where, you know, with the kind of behaviour that sort of was uh shown on the um the oscars you know with something like that we like with the will smith thing you know if something was to happen because of what's happened outside you know the film set and you got things happening like this for example you know with their uh, with them being arrested and imprisonment the moment they unrelease it do you think there'd be something put in place in regards to like for example um you know like if you were um, like in the NHS, you know, if they've, if you've done something wrong within the, that profession, you'll be like blacklisted or even yeah, highlighted. Struck you, yeah, struck well, off. I, I, well, I think I think a lot of places. I mean, this is what the DBS was invented for. It's great at whittling out the people who have been caught, but it's not good at whittling out the people who have stayed stayed well hidden. I mean, another another prime example is there's a four-letter karate organisation where somebody very senior is in a lot of trouble, and that. And I mean, uh, that was all brushed under the carpet. But the thing is, he would have passed all his DBS checks and everything because he was never caught. And this this is the problem. This is the problem that you have is because a DBS check can only do so much. It can only find people who have been guilty of committing that sort of crime. So. I guess in what I'm trying to say is when once they've paid uh, the penalty, you know, it shows up on the D DBS, they've had sexual offences or, you know, uh, violent offences and they can't work with kids, but it doesn't stop them from working with adults. Well, this is it, you know, how much more, you know, if if they're well, in, they're not in, in a good position to teach you know they should not be able to to to, to teach overall you know full stop should they really you know you, if they've you've been, got to bring you know, it right right down to what martial arts boils down to um one, one of the the sort of core pillars to all martial arts people will practice martial arts for different things they'll practice it for health fitness sport but one of the primary things that most people get into martial arts for is to protect themselves and we as instructors our jobs um, at the very bottom line of everything is to ensure that, that our participants are kept safe. We ensure that people are kept safe. So as martial artists, whether whether it's by ourselves um, influencing an organisation, if you've got somebody who's exploited people, use their position to exploit people, it's our job to ensure that they can't fucking do it anymore. It's that simple. Right. You know, yeah. and, and th these people, they shouldn't be given the opportunity to, to, to be 
in any way, shape or form, able. Again, you know, that it puts a black mark on all of us. It doesn't matter whether you're a boxer, whether you're a jiu judoka, karateka. It doesn't matter what you do, how you train, what background your martial arts come from. We all get tarred with that brush. You know, every time one prominent figure comes up in the news, it doesn't matter what it is that they come from. We're all guilty in the public's eye to some degree, you know, it affects us all. So these people need to effectively be struck off, you know, blacklist them, ensure That's that it. they can't do it again. The worst, the worst, the worst thing uh, situations is going on at the minute in a four-letter organisation, uh, probably one of the biggest, fo well, the biggest four-letter organisation in the Shouter Can Karate world. And, uh, you know, that puts a massive black stain on the style that we do because people think, oh, shout can karate. If they see that on a flyer somewhere, you know, it's all Craig says it's it's the attachment or oh, karate shout can won that the thing, and people don't understand that there's that many flipping multiple factions. I mean, and that's exactly. just in that style. Like, I mean, if we were to go on karate as a whole, there's like a billion organisations. But like Craig says, these people tar tar the whole thing with the same brush. Yeah, you know and I mean, it's like. Um, there was a case the other week of a head teacher in a school um, being outed, you know, and the next thing, you know, you know, you've got parents now saying, flipping out, you can't send your kids to school safe, and it, it's all schools have been tied with the same brush. So, you know, do I think they should be blacklisted? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good, that's a good shout. Like, that's a good shout <laughs> because um, I think, to be honest with you, all the martial arts sort of uh, governing bodies and even like ourselves should have like a petition or something where there should be a, a, a legality where people that have been a martial arts practitioner and, you know, the regardless of what position they're in and the, they're in, you know, in they've got a, they're representing martial arts, you know, and martial arts is like big, big, all, you know, if we put all of us together, goodness me you know a lot of people will think well you know if you go to a martial arts place and then like you said it's an, that attachment and i think it'd, it'd be ideal to have that you know where all the well-known martial arts organizations and governing bodies to or even sort of put that out there and say well look there needs to be something in place where you know if you have people that are doing all these things they should be able to say well look nope they're on the list be aware of these people trying to go out there to teach and coach. This is who they are. It doesn't matter what they look like, you know, in, in terms of and, and their, their main behavior. And even if they change a the name, it should be traced back. You know, they've got their identity, you know, through there and everything else. Because, you know, there's nothing worse when you've got all these martial artists out there like yourselves. And it's it's um it's become more of a reputation. You know, you need to have a reputable thing. You know, you're a business. You're all martial artists. And the last thing you want, you know, is to have that kind of level of reputation brought upon you just because of the, the sort of these small minority of groups of people that are doing these things, you know, that's not appropriate to, to, to anyone, men, women, children, you know, of all different things, you know, what, what they've done, all the offences that they've had. And the other thing is, as well, guys, just to go back onto a little bit of a light-hearted sort of question on there, just to let everybody know, because Lucci and Craig are quite aware of what kind of questions I come out with, because they'll probably be grinning now behind the camera going, yep, we know what it's like. So this is a little initiation for you, James. <laughs> As you've been welcomed to the Will, uh, the actual Phil Caruso 2.0, what aquatic creature would you be? <laughs> I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go with a uh, great white shark. <laughs> <laughs> what would you be, Luke? <laughs> a piranha. <laughs> <laughs> So I eat, I eat, dead, I eat dead quick. My wife was always, you didn't bite. She what? My wife will watch me eat. So you didn't bite. <laughs> that at all. So, chew your food. I'm like, 
Yeah, I nearly choked in Tunisia once. Doing that. <laughs> what about yourself, Craig? An orca. An orca? Wow. For what? Killer whale, mate. All right, okay. <laughs> I've got, well, myself, just to let you guys know, I'd be a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you know what, mate, you're gonna cut, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna save you in more contacts. This flipping egg, it's not, it's not a, killer, a killer whale and a dolphin. <laughs> New finding Nemo is gonna be lit. <laughs> so, you could have, you know, my spirit you animal. Could, you could have gone swordfish, you could have gone swordfish. <laughs> You could have gone. I like Luke's reaction. Stingray, you could have come up with something dead odd. No, nah, you it's wouldn't choose Stingray, right? would you? Nobody's going to choose but Stingray no. after Steve Irwin, man. A dolphin. A dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Oh, no. oh, my goodness. Oh, oh that's funny. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's a point and a reminder, actually, Phil, um, just to move on uh, a little bit more. So um, we mentioned sure. Kaizen earlier. Um, yes. But Luke, we're also involved in another massive event coming up at the end of June as well. Yes. That's, That's right. The, uh, the Festival of I've, Martial Arts, yeah? I've posted the website, Festival of Martial Arts. It Ooh. is what it's at. Do you want to tell you a little bit about that, Phil? Uh, yeah, that please. Along. Go ahead. Go Myself ahead. and Matt State, we spoke. We um, Matt's done a lot of work behind the scenes from this. To be honest, a shout out with Matt. He really has. Um, he's, he's done um, loads and loads. It's in Somerset. He lives near Somerset. He don't live far from there, so he can easily get to get to the venue when when needs to be. Originally, it was a self defense one called Defense Fest, and we spoke. Let's do a self defense thing. I, I said to him earlier, I get lots of people um, reaching out to me wanting to do. Um, events with me. I see why, because I'm just great. And um, yeah, so Matt come up and says, we had, a, we had a lots and lot. We spoke about it for ages and ages and ages. And lockdown, lockdown come. Did the J Maz Japanese martial arts show? And it came up in conversation again. I says, yeah, do you know what? Yeah, let let let's do it. It's going to be a self defense only. It's going to be like a bit, a bit of a bad boys weekend away. It's going to be absolutely awesome. And do, do you know what I mean? We'll, we'll, we'll get Tommy Joe Moore to do a midnight seminar. That'll be good. Cause that'll be dead fucking scary. And, um, he went to see the, um, he, he would go in the dark. At the risk of getting battered by him at the next one. He, yeah. yeah. He'd glow yeah, in the yeah. dark. Well, well, that'd be good though. Tommy, Tommy Joe Moore, midnight seminar. That'll be hilarious, <laughs> won't it? Is That's it. We, we're setting a fight club up at the uh, festival. Mate, yeah. mate you know what? Actually, th thinking, of, thinking of that one, Roy, I bet he hasn't even booked into a fucking glamping tent. He's just going to sleep under his fucking top with his fucking boxing glove as a pillow. He's sleeping, he's yeah, he's sleeping he's under He's just going to steal a sheep, skin it, and boom, that's his bed. He's, <laughs> he's, good, he's good to go. <laughs> Tommy, no more. Don't sleep. He don't sleep. He waits. He'll be away. He'll be waiting for you. God, I can imagine it now, man. He'll have his, he'll have his little little kettle. It'll be like six in the morning be, with his bacon. Be waking everyone up. Come on, come play for some. <laughs> Please, man. Don't forget, don't Ginger, forget him drinking. We're all gonna get back. If he, if, if, oh, if he's he's there good, with his flat cap on, with his tea and saucer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you can right. mass violence. He's so civilized. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so he shows me this venue, and I've seen the video. He did like a video and and and, um, and, and loads of pictures, and we both was like, "Wow, this is too good for just awesome. self defense only." Let's let's open it. Let's open it up to everybody. My vision is to have a Glastonbury, like, but but a martial art version of Glastonbury. So in the, in, in the I I, um, I planned Kaizen to be like that, but we can't do nothing in the evening. So once five o'clock comes, everyone goes home. They're all tired. So in the evening, we're going to have evening entertainment and all kinds of mad stuff going off. 
and in the daytime, martial arts seminars, business business coaching, axe throwing, archery, lots to do with the kids. I wanted bingo, but that got ruled out. I wanted a <laughs> tribute band that got ruled out. <laughs> Honestly, I wanted a circus that got ruled out. I was going to put a wrestling ring in there and have like midgets wrestling. That got ruled out. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh man! Have you seen the Wolf of Wall Street where they, they throw the midgets at the park wall? But we got uh, that got I'm really like, only joking, joking. Man. <laughs> you know what? We could have on that man. Set up yeah, a bit of all that been brilliant. All times going off. Matt's brought <laughs> Matt's brought one of them. Do you know them things where you stick your head in and you've got your hands there and you've got your, your sponge and you lob it. Throw some at the sense, throw a get the sense a wet boom. Oh, the, the instructor's gonna be like like that, and all the kids are gonna get a, a, a sponge, wet the sponge, and try and get it in the sense oh. phase. We'll do that, we'll do that for charity. Oh, I've good. got experience with that one, I did that before. The kids, yeah, loved it. yeah, yeah they, they were absolutely pelting me with sponges, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> right up until the point yeah. where the sponges start to pick yeah. up, it's yeah. in that, and then you just Bush get crafted, man. well, bushcraft. Oh. All that so there's loads going off. You should, cut him, you should cut him into ninja throwing stars. Good idea, that good idea. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that are not literal <laughs> throwing stars. I mean, the sponges, mate. Yeah, <laughs> nah, you did, you did the throwing, you, you did the throwing stars for them, for them, them ones that have been blacklisted. That's what you should do. That'll be a good event. <laughs> Oh god, I'm so I'm got, loving this, guys. We got the guys oh, on the eleventh, and one one week, two, and then three weeks later, we got we got the camp, which is very yep. very close. But I couldn't move; it was too late to move Kaizen to winter because I wanted Kaizen to be a winter event. But next year, Kaizen's going to be a winter event because we're indoors. What's the point of having it in the summer when you're indoors? You know what I mean? So we might as well make sense. Yeah, we might as well have it in like autumn. Towards going on, going towards winter, so that's the plan for twenty four. Is have a obviously depending on how successful. I, I, looking at it, looking at the camp already, it's, it's going to. I think I'm confident it's going to be a, a very good success. Again, brilliant lineup, brilliant lineup of instructors, all different from from everywhere, all different. We, we've got knights, we've got these night night fighting, and oh man, crazy, maybe wow. even. Bushcraft, we've got a lot, whatever. We've got this, some this literally something for everybody. But the evening, I'm looking forward to, I'm very looking forward to Tommy Joe Moore's midnight seminar, which he does, doesn't know nothing about yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a, this sounds fun already, Lee. Glow in the dark, noise fighting. Honestly, because all the all, all the pop. All the posh pods. I'm like, what's the point? Bloody camping. But these posh pods are really nice, man. Have you seen them? They've all gone. I'm in one of the posh pods. Yeah, posh pod. Oh, man. Yeah, we're all going to crash into yours then. Eventually eating double really nice soft bread. You know what I mean? He's got a kitchen. Yeah, so you're all going to have like knackered backs and everything. I'm going to be turning up fresh as a daisy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, aircon. He's got aircon all in this posh, posh little pod bloody thing. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Flipping heck. You'll have, you'll have Tommy have next to him with a, yeah, outside, with a outside, with a whole outside, dog, a rabbit outside. skinned, and a tarp <laughs> sheet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So all right, that's, guys. That's, that's the Festival of Martial Arts, and I'm really excited to um, organise yeah. that. Really, really generally am. And it's... Um, a very big, big task. It's a big um, project to work on, probably one of the biggest ones I've ever worked on, and um, makes Kaizen look dead easy. Trust me, when we put them both together, uh, but I'm having a well deserved rest. I've got a rest soon anyway. I'm off to Tenerife next week or the week after. I'm having a week off, and then I'll come back, back to work, God. and um, probably after the camp, um, have a little break. Yeah, no, it's great. Sounds good. We just take it out of here. Then we'll be back on for 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 Christmas and um, a really interesting Christmas show for everyone. 
Oh, and, and I'm looking forward to that. And, you know, and, and I'll, I'll be, I say this every year. I'll probably retire next year, but I'll, I'll, I won't because there's more big stuff coming. Coming. So no. I say big stuff. I don't like to shoot myself in the foot. Do you know what I mean? Because I've said that loads of times. Oh, I'm doing this, doing that, we're doing that. And they don't get bloody done because one thing or the other. We were supposed to have Master Ken last year. That went tits up. Um, we were supposed to have... Uh, we, 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 was, we was nearly the first... One side, Mark Stas over that 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 cocked up. Then that told me, you know, stick to what you're good at, and that's um, grassroots martial arts, and then that, that's where we've been very successful, and that's where it's staying. All right, so I don't want Chuck Norris. I've turned down Chuck Norris a few times. Cool. I am really, I am really, but you know what I mean. You get what I mean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. People think people take me really serious. You know what I mean. <laughs> On April, April Fools, as an April Fools joke, I posted that I've got Chuck Norris coming to Kai's hand. People fucking messaged me. I can't believe it. <laughs> I get tickets, and I'm like, fucking Jesus, man. Honestly, think I'm going to get three Chuck Norris. <laughs> I can't afford Never it. So- like. Beard. We could we could have got you some Chuck Norris jeans and a cowboy hat, Craig. Yeah. I've got the chest That's there, mate. That's a shot. Just Walker, isn't it? Walker, Texas. Walker, yeah, yeah. That's it. Walker, Texas Ranger. That's it. But I got asked no. yesterday. Julian Mason said, "Would you, would you have Scott Aitken, Atkin, whatever his name is?" All right, he's a nice guy. I spoke to him at the UK Martial Arts Show. We was both both in the VIP section. How cool is that? We was both in the VIP section, and he asked me for a selfie, and I, I gave him one, and he asked me for my autograph, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I did that, and I said. Um, he said, do you want to be in a film with me? And I said, no. And he started crying and uh, walked off. But, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not really. He's a nice guy. A really nice chap, to be fair. We had a really, really cool conversation, man. We, had a, we, 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 we shared a cup of tea together. We had a, cup, we had a brew. And I um, went on to do my seminar. It was all right. But, no, because I, I, and I said, I answered, I said, Scott, no, no disrespect to Scott, but I don't think it will suit. Kaizen won't do him no favours because it won't suit him. It won't suit that, if, 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 if you know what I mean. That's fair enough. What is the most random item each of you have ever bought online or even in a shop? Hmm. Hello, Ziggy. Yeah, uh, Ziggy's here. <laughs> well, was was that, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's that's Luchy's most random thing you ever bought. A gigantic <laughs> dog. <laughs> this is the most <laughs> random thing we bought. I, I t- do you want to tell you the story. Go I, for it. I, I kid you not. This is one hundred percent true. I kid you not. So, my wife, my wife had a couple. Right, I was driving, and we having we having dinner. We having dinner outside. And we see this huge dog, this huge dog. And I said to I said to the missus, no, no, that's a cane of corsa. It's not a Neapolitan Mastiff. Because it's, it's, it's a cane of corsa. Well, no, no, they're very similar. I'm like, right. So I went over and I went to um, I went I, I went to the owners. I says, I says, stroke your dog. I'm stroking the dog, lovely, like big one. He's jumping up with me, he's slavering on me, and everything. And I says, is it a Neapolitan or a cane of corsa? He says, oh, he's a cross with both. Like, all right, no one's won the bet, so I went back. While I'm walking back to my missus, she's already online looking for a Neapolitan Mastiff, <laughs> right? And Ziggy was being advertised about five minutes away from my house. And wow. And she, she had, my, my, my wife's like, she gives me this look where I'm like, fucking hell, this is going to cost me money. I call it the cost me money look. <laughs> She gave me this bill. Know that one, yeah. She gave me that. She gave me that. This is going to cost me money. Look, and it and it, and that same evening, I went. Me, and my, me, and my lad, we went to buy Ziggy. Yes, and there was Goodness. two left in the litter, and I'm like, I can't buy both. One of you's going to have to. I've got my son. I said, just, I said, just pick one. I'm not, I'm not bloody bothered. I didn't like him at first. Didn't like oh. him I, don't, I don't like him. I don't like him now. But you know, <laughs> that, was, that was the 
really spontaneous that was because we, we, we was going out for a meal and come back with um and come back with a dog. <laughs> wow, that's one of the best stories I've heard of random items or or purchases. Wow, goodness. What about yourself, Craig? Uh, probably, probably a pistol crossbow that I bought when I was way too young to buy one. <laughs> um, <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> at Senai years and years ago, um, I think I was about fourteen. Um, and yeah, I, I bought a pistol crossbow from a from a stall that was on at Senai, and then about five minutes later. Um, watch the guys get escorted, um, including all of their goods by the police from the venue because they were they were selling uh, throwing stars, which were you know highly illegal at the time as well. Um, oh. yeah, they, they got escorted out, and I, I spent the entirety of the event walking around with a crossbow um, that, that I illegally purchased in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did That's you go to any when it was at Birmingham, Craig? At the NEC? Yeah, it was at the, yeah I, I went. The last one I went to was the one where they had Master Ken there. Um, so I remember meeting him. Uh, was that, that you, mean, around, you mean T-Max? T-Max in Coventry? No. No. No, I never made the was Coventry one. Did Master Ken do Senny as well? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's that's I met, was the um, last decent one. Yeah, the first semi I went to, I met Neil Adams and I met Hoyce Gracie. First time I met Hoyce Gracie. Uh Goodness. that must cost thousands and thousands to put what put that on. Yeah. Because it was a fucking man, isn't it? Who, who arranged that and, and he went on to quite big things. So it was shame, really. T Max then, mate, with yeah. Cochran. With, with, with thingy, it was T Max at the Coventry Football Club at Coventry. That wasn't Senny. No, nah, Senny, the it was Senny that I went to, though. That was Birmingham. For that sure. was Birmingham NEC. Yeah, yes. NEC, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Shirling Monks were there, weren't they, as well? But, the Shirling Monks, they had the uh, Marines doing the abseiling from the from the ceiling. They had that shooting range in there. That was ace. I think I'll tell you one of the best events I went to was the Arnold Schwarzenegger one. But that were, well, I've never been, been to an Arnold. Oh, really? Really? You know, if you're into weight training, it's, it, it's awesome. But they had a bit of MMA on there as well. And even that was really good. The old setup was awesome. Oh, really, amazing. really good. 60,000 people went over the weekend. Goodness. To go and see Arnold, Arnold didn't even turn up. He didn't even turn <laughs> up to his own show. He didn't turn up to his show. And they, they, they interviewed him via the video link. No, yeah, big Eddie all there, Eddie Hall were there, big Eddie Hall. When I had a little chat with Eddie Hall, big laugh. Brilliant. Yeah, that was one of the best ones I've been to, and obviously Senny, Senny, and T Max was the best. There, there, there. There was probably the three top um, expos I went to, even better than mine. Believe they, it they were big at the time, weren't they? Because they, they, they just sort of all stopped. Yeah, all at the same time. They just... time. You got you got you got to remember, Craig. You know, Kai's hands a part time thing. It's, it's a, it's a. Um, I've not even took it serious yet. We're not even taking it serious. But each year we add a little brick to it, and you know, you never, you never know, you never know. Then ask myself, do I do I want it as big? Do I want the NEC arenas? Do I want all that? Do I want the headache? What comes with it? Do you know what I mean? Because there's margins, there's no financial benefit to it whatsoever. Seminars are popping up all over the place because people think they're going to get really rich. I didn't get rich because of bloody seminars, trust me. I'm still poor. Yeah. Well, you, you yeah. never you never, never say never, Luch, because, you know, with these things, you know, that you run, you like, know, you know what? Like the I future... Say yeah, like I said yesterday on Julian Mason's podcast, right? Um, martial arts, I don't look at it as a money maker because it will just be. I'll see. I'll see it's, it's totally different. Totally different, right? I made. I make a good living already without martial arts. I've got a lovely house. I drive a big car. I've got Ziggy. Do you know what I mean? I go on holiday four times a year. I, I, I earn a very good living what I do in the daytime. And 
Martial arts for me, it's a nice, it's a nice hobby. It's it's a passion more than anything, and I I really generally enjoy putting putting these events on because the financially it's, you're talking margins. Seriously, we give loads away, man. We give we give it loads away. Do, do you know what I mean? There's no no. That's why it's always best stick to grassroots. And that's when you see good the good quality martial arts. Because if you if, if you notice, I've been on seminars before with my heroes, and I'm like, could have got a bit more out of that. What Matt good, but I've been on the map with him. Do you know what I mean? And I think a lot. But when you go on seminars, Craig, I know Craig, Craig will teach from his heart, and he'll teach his heart out on the mat, and and you see that. And you see that with all the instructors, like Simon Oliver and, and Terry Burkett, they're all, they're all will. Tommy Joe Moore, every you not see, doesn't matter if Tommy, if, if there's one person on the mat or 2,000 on the mat with him, he'll it, it, teach with that same uh, motivation. It's because we love it, man. Exactly that, because we love it. We do what we, you know, we do, we do, we do what we do, and that's and that's that. Right, and you and yourself, James. You know what is the um, you know, just sort of making sure that you obviously you're included as well. We haven't forgotten you, James. <laughs> is um, what was I, your life? I forgot about you, James. I'll be honest. <laughs> what... <laughs> oh, folks, this is so entertaining and so funny. We're always picking on James. I'm not going to pick on Craig. He's massive. The size of oh. him. <laughs> James, what is your what is your the, the most the most random purchase online or even in a shop that you've uh, you've had? Can't hear you, mate. Can't hear you, mate. I think he said a Kaizen ticket. <laughs> <laughs> What was that, James? He's either miming really well or we're having technical difficulties. It's oh, no, we've lost him completely. <laughs> you wait so till the, the replay goes. Was whatever he was um, communicating to us with, whatever that <laughs> phone was. <laughs> He'll be back. Oh, but, oh, but yeah, but, my... yeah. But keep keep doing what you're doing, Phil. You, you you're building a great show, and you are, um, Craig. Getting you're there. You're both, building sure. great, you're both doing good, good, positive stuff in the martial arts, which is um, it's what it's what it's about, and you you giving you giving everyone a platform. Yeah, it's much appreciated, Lucci. You know, it's um. It's one of these things where, which is why I um I wanted to invite uh, James everybody um because Lucci's been on my on my pod on my podcast and uh, on my show on the Phil Crew Show 2.0. It's about the second time round, and no doubt it'll probably, it'll, it won't be the last either. And and Craig as well um is this is the second time round as well, but it'll be it's the first that James has come on. Um, it's unfortunate at the moment that. You know, when you get onto the the audible, uh, James will be coming back at some point. You know, whatever's happened there. Um, but we had a great discussion so far in regards to martial arts and what happened outside the dojo. And also, uh, just to let everyone know, if they haven't caught up yet and they've only just tuned in, we've been discussing about two other events uh, that's happening in uh, in June, and the first part of June will be uh, Kaizen, um, Kaizen Adrenaline. 2023 with a lot of instructors and, and various disciplines uh, with uh, demonstrations, seminars, workshops, and um, even some tr um, some trade stands that will be available there at the time. This will be in Nottingham, uh, which is going to be absolutely fantastic on a Sunday. And then also on another um, another event that we've mentioned as well that Lucci eloquently put in regards into in quite uh, great detail of uh, the festival of martial arts which is the end of june and it's going to be exciting times and uh, if you like your glamping or your camping around there so <laughs> it's going to be like the glastonbury of somerset <laughs> 
we're mixed in with fitness and martial arts and some other bits and pieces and there. Else, yeah. time. So you, the um, Kai's and the date for that, just so everybody knows, that's uh, June the 11th. So that's on a Sunday. Um, the festival kicks off on Friday the 30th of June and finishes Sunday the 2nd of July. Yeah. So, you, so you've you got can, a good long weekend with that one. Yeah, you can come and like set up June the 30th. Um, we'll, we'll be doing something anyway then, but really, really kicks off June the, yeah, June the 30th to July the 2nd. Are you there for the three days, Craig? I'm there for the entirety, mate. Oh, <laughs> I, think, I think the glamping pods are available until the Monday morning, aren't they? That's correct. Um, yeah, that's so, correct. yeah, I think I'm planning on heading back home on the Monday morning. Yeah. Oh, bro. bro it's going to be a Goodness. good weekend. It's going to be awesome. Wow. I wonder how long it's going to take for some people to recover on that. It's going to be a very busy and energetic. It sounds like it's going to be very full, full of energy, excitement. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's there's a there's there's a like everything. There'll be a curfew. Do you know what I mean? I like I like to be in bed for ten o'clock, and it's it's like twelve minutes past ten now. So you know. <laughs> That's what James is going to do. <laughs> oh goodness me. Well, anyway, whatever happens, you know, we'll have James back on at some point, you know, with with some uh, questions I'm going to ask him. Right, folks, just to let you know on here as well, just a few more questions just to sort of wrap things up because I don't want to sort of keep these guys um, up too long. What is the best takeaway you have ever eaten? Mm. I'm going to go for um, three spices in Nottingham, in a place called Ruddington in Nottingham. It's an Indian. And, nice. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky. I've got a wife that can cook really, really good. She cooks really beautiful, delicious food for me. But when it's like takeaway, um, in, Indian Indian food for me all, all, all day. Indian, nice and can't beat it. Ooh, I lovely. used to go to um, there was a really nice little back alley place in Birmingham near the Arcadian that I found. Um, I actually don't know the name of the place because the sign wasn't in English. Um, but uh, they they did a fantastic sort of um, uh, pork uh, and broth noodle dish. It was amazing. Yeah, um, I used to used to be able to eat from there quite frequently for really cheap. Um, and um, yeah, that was an amazing little place. You, you wouldn't even know it was there unless you either stumble on it by accident or somebody guided you to it. Um, so I can't even give the place a shout out, but it, it, it's the best noodles I've ever had. The the best pork I've ever had in my life. It was amazing. Goodness. Really. Yeah. Let me just touch, Phil, I just want to touch back to um, Festival sure. of Martial Arts. Yeah, people have asked about, we've got amazing caterers, amazing caterers. Pizzas, beautiful. We've got some, we've got award-winning caterers on there. So don't, you know, obviously don't. I, I know pe people will bring their own food as well, but, which is fine. But, you know, wow. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Lucci, because, like, you know, yeah. it's, it's good to have that um, and make bar. people aware of that. Yeah, there's a bar. Um, yeah. Cool. All good, good to go. Right, okay. Uh, just a quick one on here. It will be, what is your favourite technique in your discipline of martial arts? Right cross. But Gyakazuki. <laughs> but it's, it's a right cross. Ooh. Never and failed. yourself, Luch? What about oh, yourself, I I like leg sweeps. My favourites are uh, leg sweeps and you know techniques. I like to be 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 close head, head elbows, power slaps, you know, shin kicks. Oh, we have we've got somebody here. Bolo punch, yes. <laughs> Demonstrates. Oh. Cool. 
Mm. Oh, I'm going to scream at you, Pia. Oh, my goodness. Right, and to wrap things up, because unfortunately, because James on there, because technicality. James, James has gone to bed now. He's nice and talked to him better. Ble yeah, what, what we didn't see is Mrs. has just killed him. He's, he's got like yeah, a shepherd's yeah, pie yeah. in the head or something. Like that. <laughs> you said you'll be 15 minutes. You said you'll be 15 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, the last the last question would be, what would you say is an ideal matchup or bout in the octagon or even a fictional character from a film? Ideal bout between two different people. Ooh. I would like to see Rocky Marciano in his time in his day versus. A round, a round of Robin here, heavyweight round of Robin. So I, I would like to see a Muhammad Ali. I've met Muhammad Ali. I would like to see Muhammad Ali at age 22 fight Mike Tyson at age 22, fight Rocky Ooh. Marciano at age 22. Wow. Any of them three fight, to, fight together. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a great powerhouse yeah. thing to, to get into. I, I, would, I, I would like to see that fight because the argument that this he was the greatest boxer of all time yeah Muhammad Ali was unbelievable but so was Mike Tyson and so was so was Marciano do, do you know what I mean so yeah. oh great answer I like that Luch what about yeah. yourself Craig oh man I, I'd go for something ridiculous man I, I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see Gandalf um the wizard uh fish fights um that's not a thing I, someone from the, from witcher from uh, witcher <laughs> yeah no no i'd like to see him fish fight um you know you know the really small guy willow have you seen that <laughs> i want to see gandalf the gray that massive tall wizard fight willow. But it's <laughs> But anything goes, so like he can bite his like shins and stuff like that, and Gandalf can just like paste him down with a stick or something. I think that'd be entertaining as as, as all hells. <laughs> oh goodness! <laughs> See, she comes out with the boxers, and Craig has to come out with two different parallels of the. <laughs> yeah, 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 I really thought about mine, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I was just running the numbers in my head. I actually think it'd be more evenly matched than you think, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so not not like a Master Yoda and Willow then. Nah man, Yoda would kill him, wouldn't he? Have you seen Yoda in them films? He's like Whoop. when he starts fighting, he's like bouncing around and stuff. And nobody touching Yoda. There's a little green ninja, man. <laughs> 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 Shall I turn it on? <laughs> I, know I, I know I should ignore that call. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, folks, right. I'm going to let these gents go, but I'm sure there'll be another time when all three of them will be back on the Phil Crew Show 2.0. And it'll no doubt it'll probably be a more specific topic as well because. The reason why um, I invited them through um, the, these three gents to come on, it's because there'll be great two great events that will be coming up uh, this year. Um, just for those who wasn't sure, just to give you a quick sort of recap of what's going on, we've discussed about uh, the actual Festival of Martial Arts, which will be the end of June. And um, also, if you're not sure, you know, get some information from myself and Craig. You know, anybody on on that's uh, that's actually involved in in that, and also the Kaizen Adrenaline Twenty Twenty Three event, which would be was it the tenth? Just to make sure, is it no, be the tenth? Tenth pre right. pre party. The pre party, yeah, pre -party is, is the tenth. Pre party is the tenth. It's that's just that's like safe to sell. Safe to say that's a sellout. That's sold out. All right. Okay. 
And then the 11th small... will be the actual event itself. Yeah, yeah. that was only a small, it's only a small little gathering of about 150. All right, it's only a small gathering, but I'll probably look at next year, potentially something a little bit bigger. I don't know. I don't know. I like, I like little small, but people are, people are, what it is, it's, it's more for the instructors what are traveling and they've got nothing to do. Um, Fair enough. In the, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll put some on. Hot and cold buffet. Entertainment. Presentations. Play it by ear. One of them. Drinks. No, fair something fair to eat. enough. Yeah, yeah. Networking. It's a good uh, idea, Lucci. Yes, yeah. So it's nothing, you know, nothing major. Very casual. You don't need your bow tie. Come, come dress as you want. Do you know what I mean? No, brilliant. Right, nice and casual. Casual. Oh, yeah. No, that's great. You know, it's right, folks. I'm going to let these gentlemen go, but I'd like to thank Lucci thank and you, Craig. Mate. Nice to see everyone. Thank you very much. And You're even welcome. James Hinsley, unfortunately, because he's he had to go for whatever reason that is, but is, the, all three of them are more than welcome to come back. Again, you know, we'll be discussing other things as well as uh, what we've been discussing as well as the events and other topics as well. Uh, you, I'm sure, you know, they'll be back on the Phil Crew Show. Um, it won't be their last. Uh, so, yeah, stay tuned, folks. Thank you very much for coming on to the Phil Crew Show 2.0. Um, All the best. Thank you. Take care, yeah, mate. No, you're, most more, you're, mo you're most welcome. And... Um, yeah, no, no doubt there'll be some other things that we'll be discussing in the foreseeable future, uh, Lucci and Craig and even James when when he comes back. Thank you very much. Don't forget to press the subscribe button on YouTube and press like and comment. And there's some information here that Lucci's uh, sort of put out as well on here on my page. And if you need any tickets and information as well, uh, feel free to contact me. I've got my email here, here as well um, on my other post. And if you need any more information about other things, if I haven't got any information on it, feel free to ask and I will I will relay you to Lucci, Craig and even James as well. If I'm not sure about what, uh, what the other sort of topics and questions you've got, I will more than welcome ask them myself and then I will relay that back to any of you that would be interested. Thank you for coming on the Phil Crew Show 2.0, guys. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good evening. You take care.